I think anybody that did any research when <clears throat> she was first diagnosed and, and understood the significance of what early onset Alzheimer's is, so it went into a mode. And then the less, uh, the less you saw her in public, the more you were understanding the progression of uh, that disease. Do you remember the last time you saw her? Was it when you spoke against her? Um, at at um, Hall of Fame induction in uh, 2013, she was there. Uh, and I, I caught her in a, coming out of a meeting in the lobby of the Marriott there in uh, Knoxville and um, had an experience an exchange with her. Uh, yeah, I remember. Did you go up against her when you were at Ohio State before you got to Vanderbilt? Did you go up against her when you were coaching at Ohio no, State? No, no. Uh, I think we had enough of each other uh, between Vanderbilt and Tennessee. What was it like playing her all those years? Uh, well, it was, it was uh, I mean, she, she was a great coach and she ran a great program and she did things that uh, allowed um, you folks uh, to become interested in women's basketball. She sort of forced you as mainstream media to pay attention um, when a lot of coaches couldn't get their athletic directors on campus to pay attention. She forced sort of the, uh, the nation to pay attention. How did she do that in your work? How did she do that? Her will. Um, she was a strong person. And, and um, you know, of all of the stuff going on today, uh, and everybody's sort of coming out with their, I don't know how many figures or characters you get when you tweet. Um, the most significant thing to me today is that the, the most powerful, busiest man in the world, uh, Barack Obama, uh, put out a release that was personal, heartfelt, and he was talking about a, a women's basketball coach. Like, what do you have to, do you have to go past that? I don't think so. What memories do you have of her most as far as, I know when you're at Bandy, you've probably had some real moments there. But the well, I, I think the most significant was, um, it turned out to be my last year. I didn't think it would, I didn't know it was going to be my last year, but the SEC championship was in Nashville. And my wife and I decided to invite um, all of the coaches to our home for uh, dinner the night before the tournament started. And they all came except two, Andy Landers, who to this day regrets that he did not come, and uh, Sue Gunner, who was recruiting uh, Simone Augustus and uh, was probably getting one up on Pat, uh, who was also recruiting Simone Augustus. But so we're sitting in my living room, and Van Chancellor, who had retired and was working for the SEC, uh, or not the FCC, but the television folks in those days, ESPN, I guess, um, sort of emceed, and we had a dinner at my house with all, all the coaches. And, and Pat was, she had a different hat on. You know, we were talking about, you know, how the house was decorated and why we did this and why we did that. We're not talking anything relative to basketball. And it was a, a very memorable, uh, fun night for, you know, all that attended. I think every coach that came enjoyed, and it was so different and so out of context for us to be in that kind of environment. And, uh, you know, I found out that Pat likes to drink a little wine, uh, which made me comfortable. I mean, is she the, the one pioneering figure for women's sports in the NCAA? I wouldn't say she's the one, but she's the most, she's the one that 
pushed the envelope. Um, she's the one that forced, you know, being redundant, forced folks to come to the games, bring a camera, and start to talk about it. Um, you can't deny that. What do you mean by being redundant? I've said that already. Oh. You were late. <laughs> you were late. <laughs> They were going to be physical, real physical. And you had to get your team to understand that and to step up to it. Yeah. I've been coaching so long in the SEC with her and against her. Um, was there any part of her coaching philosophy or something she did with her team that you really um, took from? Or maybe I know I, 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 I've been asked that, and I don't think I think coaches sort of look at coaches and pick a piece, you know, I, I, of a lot. I don't think it's any one, um, but I, I, her intensity, her focus, her single-mindedness. I think that is something that I think resonated with with uh, coaches for sure. Do you remember the first time you played her? Well, my memory plays tricks, but I think we did in in Miami uh, when I was at St. Joe. Okay. Um, okay. Before I'd have to look up, but I think we had a game. I know we were in the same tournament. I know Texas was there. I know Texas and and uh, Tennessee played in the final, and I know during the game, Jody Conrad and uh, Pat Summit had the interesting discussion uh, in a gym that probably seated about 250 people. Um, but obviously when I got to Vanderbilt a lot more often and then not, not until we played in the NCAA tournament uh, my, towards the end of my tenure at Ohio State did we play them again. Actually it was a regional uh, NCAA tournament game. I don't know what the crowds were like maybe when you first got to Vanderbilt but when the Lady Balls would come to Nashville was it just a no, I, I think we did something that turned Pat's attention in another direction when we, uh, uh, looking back, Rick George, who was, is now the athletic director at Colorado, was uh, a, a, an assistant athletic director at Vanderbilt, and Rick gave away, uh, got a deal with one of the, uh, if not a gas station, a convenience combination, gas station, convenience store, uh, for giveaways uh, for our game against them. But he didn't put a limit on it, okay? So uh, we sold, the game sold out, but there was another five to 7,000 people outside that couldn't get in, including our chancellor, <laughs> including Vince Gill, who was singing the national anthem. Um, I think we snuck him in through the back door. But, you know, this is 93 maybe. So Vanderbilt has sold out a women's basketball game and um, it, it was a significant event and a significant evening. And it was a great game. What do you think her story coming from a small town and playing at UC Martin and then going on to such success, success through other coaches and players? Well, obviously it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your pedigree is. You know, today people put such a uh, emphasis on where you have been, what you, uh, who you've been affiliated with when it comes to hiring. Um, I think a lot of times today, um, athletic directors are more interested in winning the press conference than they are the success of their team. And uh, it, by today's standards, Pat uh, Head doesn't get an opportunity to be the coach of Tennessee. Coach, did you ever go head-to-head -head recruiting again? Pat uh, over a particular player? Um, occasionally. 
not not as often as you would think. Um, uh, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, different uh, schools with different philosophies, I guess would be the best way to say it. But when we did, uh, it was interesting. We got some, they got some. 